Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about Shader Map 4. Now, this is a program I've been intending to cover for ages now, but for some reason, I've never actually got to it. So today, we're going to rectify that and check out Shader Map 4. Now, if you've never heard of it, Shader Map 4 is basically a Swiss Army tool for creating uh, textures. You're going to see this got quite a bit of power, which we're going to demonstrate right off the hop, and then from that, we'll go in and take a look at some of the details. Now, i got to warn you guys, this is Windows-only software, and it is actually commercial. What we're seeing today is completely free. If you want to have things like the ability to use it commercially or PBR texture-based workflow, you're going to have to buy the pro version. But you're going to find even the basic downloadable version I'm looking at today is quite powerful. So this is the initial loading screen. You've got a couple of options. You can load from a source. You can drag a file in, which is what we're going to do in a second. You can open a recent file. Uh, you can start something from a template. So you know things like uh, PBR pebbles or metal. We're not using PBR workflow because, again, that is a pro feature. So we're just going to use a standard workflow today. You've also got script abilities from the pro version. Version. We're not doing that today, obviously, because we're demonstrating the free version. So you've got all other options here. You can work with textures. You can work with models, normal map, or displacement map. We're going to start off. We'll first do a demonstration using textures. Then I'll do one showing some of the functionality you can do with models. So first things first, we need to bring in a texture. I went ahead and downloaded a texture. Ironically, this one has all of the maps generated for it. But it's a color map here or a diffuse map. I'm going to drop that in. This came from uh, CC0 textures. You can see here it's a tileable um, stone floor tile. Simple enough. Uh, once it's loaded in, give it a couple seconds, it's going to load on the initial display model available right down there. Now you've got the option of changing that out. So we go from a cylinder to a cube to a plane and a sphere. And I'm going to go back. Plane kind of makes a sense here because we're probably working on um, a uh, you know a floor or a ground surface or something. It's naturally orbiting. You can see the effect right there. You can orbit around with the left mouse button, zoom in and out using the wheel. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what this guy has done. So right off the hop, it automatically generates. So here is our diffuse channel. You're going to notice we have these other channels and you see the line back. These are being created by that original source channel. So here we've got a normal map that is being created by the displacement map. The displacement map is being created uh, by the diffuse we brought in. Here you can see we've got a specular map that is being generated by the initial texture we dropped in. And at this point in time, you could simply be done, to be honest. So over there, you see the various different options. We've got a couple of different uh, materials being created here. So we got a standard material right there. We have a displacement type material, and then we have a parallax material. So the displacement type material, if you double click on it, you'll see all the different maps that it's generated. So it's creating a diffuse, a displacement, a normal, a specular, an ambient occlusion. Uh, it doesn't appear to be making an emissive map in this case, but those are the maps that are going to be working from that workflow. So I'm just going to drop that in here, and there you see our displacement map. So our displacement map is very displacy, <laughs> a very, very displacy map. So what we could do is come down here, and we can change the amount of displacement being applied. And there you can see much more reasonable displacement going on, or we could actually go full out, a lot of displacement. All right, so our displacement map is probably overkill. That looks probably about right for cobblestone. At the same time, we have a normal map. We can turn it off and on like so, and we got control over the normal map over here. So here's the normal map being generated. We can change out the intensity right there. We can change out the different points of it. Uh, low, medium, and high detail. And that is how you kind of modify or work with your normal map. Now, I really cranked it down there, I think. So you can see it automatically renders down there. And there is kind of how it works. You just basically start using these various different maps to generate other maps. Uh, you can change the amount that you want to work with at any time. You can, so if I want to get rid of displacement map, we can drop over here. You can toggle the visibility of any map off and on right here. So if you just want to use the diffuse and normal but no specular, we can do that there, or we can turn the specular back on right there. Obviously, you've got control over all the various different pieces. I'm going to go back again to the displacement map. I think that's kind of the one that really showcases the, the functionality here. And then when you are ready and good to go, you basically just click here, and that will export all of the appropriate textures. Remember when we looked at this guy earlier on, there was uh, five or six kind of textures being generated. Well, if we head on back over here, they get saved in the same directory. Now, obviously, since I downloaded it and had a bunch of these available, it's got a couple of copies now because, again, I didn't really need it in this case because the CC0 textures come with all of this functionality applied. But as you can see, you can use Shader Map to really quickly create um, derived maps, things like uh, displacement map, ambient occlusion map, normal maps, and so on. Or you click here and create a new map from a number of different things. So you've got new sources that you could bring in, like a light scan, a normal map, displacement map, or so on. Or you can have it generate various different kinds of maps. So if I wanted to create a cavity map, unfortunately, pro feature in that case, I could if I wanted to create a color ID from a 3D model, I could, a glossiness, uh, normal maps, uh, 
various different kinds uh, of different maps can be created. Basically, just drop them in, and you have the generator that comes in to handle it. So that is uh, a kind of the most basic form. So you can use um, Shader Map to really quickly and easily create uh, your normal maps, displacement maps, and so on. You can again preview the results in real time kind of change things out on the fly and see the results of them. Also, you've got control over your lighting up here. I forget exactly how to work this guy, but we can change and move the lighting around like so. Also, you can turn it, uh, you can change the environment map setup. So we could have it using a completely different HDRI map that is brought in. Those maps coincidentally are being sourced by HDRI Haven, uh, but you can see there, is the map we're working on. So that is the one initial workflow uh, we've shown so far. You could also, by the way, bring in your own 3D model if you wished, and then have it apply the surface to your own model. So if you wanna see it previewed on your own model, in addition to the ones that you saw available down here, you have that option. All right, so that is um, kind of the straight up texture features going on here. So I'm gonna go, go out here, and this will bring us right back here. So now I'm gonna switch to 3D model mode like this, and I'm going to bring in their model. It's from one of their demos. It's a high resolution tire. There you go. So what you can see here is we have a tire model, a high definition version of it. And you can see with it loaded up here, I can go ahead and say load cage model. So this is a low polygon version that kind of encompasses all of this. So click here and then that is in my downloads tire model low. All right, so now I have a low polygon cage model to go around the outside of it. Uh, as well as our high high detail model on top. Now it's important because you'll notice over here, we've got a bunch of predefined textures here, a world space and um, tangent space normal maps, for example, displacement maps, ambient occlusion map, and color ID map. I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna go to normal map and there's this guy right here, basically start rendering this map. So what I'm doing now is I am rendering a normal uh, texture. And, and this is actually one of those things that is challenging. So you can see here, we have, um, it's generated, it's showing it on the cylinder. I could go to various different shapes. But what we've done here is basically created a normal map from our model. So you can use this to basically uh, bake out the high resolution details. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go in and load the low model cage. So here's the, the low resolution tire, like so. And make sure my map is applied to it. There you go. So you're seeing the effects of the uh, normal map being applied here in it. And again, we can control. So do we have a displacement map yet? No, we don't. So let's go ahead. We'll bake out a displacement map. All right, so we got a displacement map there. We can apply the amount of displacement map affects our object. Uh, we've, we can turn that off and on coincidentally. We can turn our normal map off and on. So obviously you can see the amount of detail that that normal map is applying to our uh, low resolution um, model there. So here is our normal map that is being generated from the 3D model. And we can keep doing this. It, it will automatically generate ambient occlusion maps. So it's looking at the geometry here and figuring out where the shadow and light will work. Obviously, we're having a bit of a, it's, it's not the greatest result so far. Let's see how it looks when it's done. Bum, bum, bum. There you go. So now we have shadowing and uh, so on being done by the ambient occlusion map. And now I'm going to come down here. We'll load the high I polygon model. So obviously you can bring in your own models and there you go. So again, you have the ability to generate normal maps, specular maps, diffuse, oh, not diffuse maps, uh, displacement maps, etc., all off of 3D geometry as well as off of, um, you know, textures like we saw earlier on. And one of those things that you can find, you can actually do this in something like Blender. You can take a, a high resolution cage, a low resolution version and bake out a normal map. It's just the process of making that normal map. It, it's a lot more painful. Here, you load your object in, you specify the cage, you go over to the uh, the normal map you're going to create, and then basically, boom. Also, if we want to do a world space normal map, we can render it down this way as well. I don't actually know anything about world space uh, normal maps personally, so I'm not going to get into a lot of detail there. And then we also have, you can bake out color ID maps um, if, if your model is set up for it. So that kind of is the, the functionality here of shader map. We've got, um, again, you can use it to rapidly create, uh, you know, normal um, height dis dis displacement and so on maps from a, a color image, or you can actually create maps directly from a 3D model. And I actually believe I can also bring in as a source, if I wanted to here, I could actually bring in a, um, 
a, a map of my choice and also work from it and, and you, you kind of mix them together in this project and your project can get quite complicated so right here we're seeing a, a small grid we could have a whole lot of things going into making it you could also go over here and create additional material options so if you want to do cell shading for example uh, you can create a shell shading map and that there you go you just created shell sh a shell a shell shaded uh, a cell shaded map here let's make this guy so it's visible all right uh, line color is red there, there we go and as you saw you can quickly create uh, shell sh uh, <laughs> cell shaded maps also so again you got various different material options here you're gonna notice a lot of things here are locked behind the pro category but even the basic program that you saw in action today is quite powerful and capable in what it can do all right so that is shader map the demonstration here we're now at shader map the website uh, kind of gives you an idea what shader map is all about unfortunately it is windows only i have no idea if it will run on wine um Features and functionality here you see fast map generation, bake maps from 3D, uh, export any map to your favorite image editor at any time. Uh, so there's actually, uh, if I go back over here to the tool, uh, there is a, I can grab, right click anything and I can externally edit them out and have it kind of come in, come out um, from, you know, I could load it out to Photoshop or paint.net or wherever else. It's fast, you can, if you've got the pro version, you can script with Lua, uh, map filters, uh, normal map editor and PBR materials. Again, that is a pro feature that you never saw. So if you're interested in picking this guy up and we only covered kind of the basics of the functionality in this demo, there are four, uh, three different versions, I guess technically four. There's the free version I just showcased to you. You can just basically come to the website and download it. Um, every, all the functionality you saw today was in the free version. If you are a student, there is a $19 version out there. It does not give you commercial use, however. Uh, personal version, same deal, no commercial use. And then commercial version is 50 bucks or technically $49. So if you're looking for a Swiss Army tool for creating uh, textures like this, uh, Shader Map Pro could be a really good choice. Now there's, there's other, um, other options out there like this, one of the ones I, I showed in the past was Materialize. Uh, various different programs, various different price tags. Uh, there's Canald as well and a few others. If you know what, uh, if one of those doesn't do what you want, this might be an ideal choice for you. Another nice thing with Shader Map, there's a decent number of tutorials to get you up and going. This tutorial here is actually where I got that tired um, from. This will show you the process of creating simple uh, maps. We get into a to more advanced stuff that you can do here. Uh, so it, I, again, I kind of scratched the surface of what the functionality here is. There is a lot more behind the scenes, but maybe I whet your appetite. You wanna go in there and check it out. Again, you can head on over here at any time. You can do the download for it. It's like a 50 meg download. Uh, there's also an SDK for extending it if you so wish to do so. And yeah, that is it. It's available at shadermap.com. I will link that in the linked article down below. Let me know what you think of ShaderMap. Have you used it? Do you use something else instead? If so, share that with me in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.